Yay, you're here. I'm so glad. Welcome to the studio. I'm Froyle and this week is week four of our 100 days of collage. I'm so excited because we're starting a series within a series. I know, right? It's all very mysterious. <laughs> we're going to start a series of looking at the colors of the light spectrum you know the one where Isaac Newton shot the beam of light to reveal the colors of the spectrum the glorious colors of the rainbow the colors of red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet I know right it's very exciting and as we're working through our hundred days of collage each week we're going to take one of these colors and focus our attention on the beautiful hue that it is we're going to be looking at how this color makes you feel what you associate with this color and other colors that you like to put together in your collage to make beautiful artwork it's going to be so much fun i can't wait and of course we get to start with my favorite color red oh! because we're going to be looking at the power of red. Oh, can't wait, it's gonna be fantastic. You're gonna love this. And if you don't like red, just hang on for the ride because we will get to a color that you do love. Each week we're going to be doing eight collages in my art journal. And if you've been following along, you know how much fun it's going to be. So I can't wait for us to explore oh, the beautiful shades of red. So how does red make you feel? Red can symbolize a whole range of emotions. Red can symbolize love, romance and passion, excitement. It can also symbolize anger, danger or warning. You might love it, you might hate it. You might really not like it as much as I do, but we're going to explore it this week and I know you're going to have fun and I can't wait till we get in the studio and let's see where this creative adventure takes us. So join me now and let's explore the power of red. Right, now I happen to absolutely love red. This is alizarin crimson and if you've been watching any of my episodes, you know that yes, I love the color. I love to mix the beautiful red tones with glorious, oh my gosh, with glorious metallic pigments of bronze and gold. So, you know, doing red for me is going to be an absolute pleasure. But I know that not everybody else loves the color. That's okay, because <laughs> we'll get to a color that you do love. Now, first of all, you want to pull out all of the paints that you have in the different shades of color, because this is the alizarin, which I so love, of the Liquitex Basics I have here at the moment. And then if you look at this one, this one is the Naphthol Crimson, and look how much more different the red is so this has got more of a yellow in it to make it more red yellow and that one has more of a blue so if you're looking on the color wheel that's going to go towards the yellow that goes towards the blue that's a warmer red and that's a cooler red and it's all absolutely fabulous and i love it if you look at the liquitex color chart See, there's the colors there. That's the naphthol crimson. And if you go even lighter, you get into the pyrrole and the cadmium and it gets more and more into the orange and the yellow. If you look at where the alizarin is, it's down this side and it heads more towards the purples and then into the blues. So which do you prefer? Because this series of creating collages is about you developing your creativity. What do you like? And then, you know, you've got to look at what are you working with at the moment. Maybe you like the yellowy reds, but then some days you might like the more moody, blue, purpley ones. You know, it does change and you are allowed to change. So I have those two beautiful reds. If you head more towards the blues and the purples, we're going to get into the magenta 
which see if you can see that that has more of a pinky purple tone to it oh absolutely fabulous love magenta and i love all of these colors with the bronze and the gold because these beautiful metallic pigments will go fabulous with the red warm tones i always use them i absolutely personally love them so much look at that oh. <laughs> that's fantastic all right so also if you go more to the yellow i have some of this is a red gold which is telling you where it's heading so heading more into the orange tones that's a great color too mixes well with the red and then into the purple oh you just gotta love color i love color absolutely love it so there's some of the paints that i have i also have some of this indian red oxide which is way down the color chart and it's going to be looking more brown hello more of an earthy red iron oxide color so if we go back to this one here you're going to find that down in these tones here the red oxides which is pretty nice if that's what you're looking for and what you're wanting to create because all the colors create a different mood and a different emotion that's really nice in the beautiful warm tones they sit well with the metallics and it all looks rather gorgeous now what else do i have in these reds oh i have some inks this one is the fw dalaroni ink it's scarlet Ooh, you know what they say about scarlet women <laughs> anyway have a look at the color it is a bright yellowy red see look at that oh looks amazing it's tending towards the red orange zone it's a gorgeous ink these are fabulous highly pigmented acrylic inks and also this one i got recently from liquitex perline maroon 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 i don't know actually how you pronounce it but if you look at this one oh my gosh it's got definitely more towards the purple and the blue side you can see the gorgeous depth of that one oh love that color absolutely glorious look at that the acrylic inks are absolutely fabulous i love working with them you can get a few more other different shades of red as well ha! Oh, why wouldn't you love it they're glorious and amazing now of course if we add some white into our red we're going to get lovely tones of pink and if we add some black into our reds we're going to get oops way too much <laughs> oopsies we're going to get other darker tones of red i oh, know it's too much black nah. what can you do <laughs> but you know what i'm trying to show you you're gonna get lighter tones and darker tones the more you add um white and black or deeper tones to your reds so you need to have a look at what you've got that's more like it see 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 that's better that's less, less black and more red that's what i was trying to do you know i don't know i'm not a big pink person but occasionally i'll bust a move and pull out some pinks um they look pretty nice in combination so you need to have a look at what's in your studio or your art space and see what you like personally to work with because that's what it's all about at the moment i also have some of these fabulous spray inks it's a dilution shimmer spray in post box red check this out oh my gosh look at that. the saturations incredible and in preparation for my collage i may have sprayed a few things that you're gonna see um come out <laughs> that is it oops everywhere that is an amazing color but then i got this one the seth apter eyes inks in a pomegranate i'm like yay what's pomegranate oh my gosh look at this that 
is even more vibrant than the other one. That is a crazy red. Look, your eyeballs are almost bleeding. That is so intense red. So I did spray a few of my beautiful papers with these colours in preparation for my glorious collage. Um, that's fun. So now that I've made a big mess all over the place, I'm going to move this off the table and pull out all the beautiful collage papers and have a play with some collage because we're making eight collages based on the theme of red and I'm going to put the metallic bronzes with the red. I'm going to put some of the deep earthy tones with the reds and I'm definitely going to put black and white because I love black and white with red. It's fantastic. Yay! Okay, let's get going. It's pretty exciting and let's see what papers I can find to play with. I'm pretty excited for this week's theme, seeing as I absolutely love this colour so much. I have some beautiful handmade paper from Nepal. I have some fabulous um, wallpaper. And look at this beautiful piece of handmade paper from somewhere. I forget. <laughs> get where it comes from but i got it from camipaper.com.au it's where i've been finding the beautiful um papers from thailand oh it's probably thai yeah it probably is um it's gorgeous anyway it's so soft and amazing it's one of those mommy gummy papers oh my gosh it's just glorious that's going to go really well with the beautiful red here's some that i've painted that was white I painted it with a red. I then had some kind of metallic red on it. And then I sprayed it with one of those hysterical sprays I just showed you. And it's come up with this kind of metallic-y patterned texture to it. And it's glorious. I love it. This is also a handmade paper from the same place. It's red with mango leaves. Who doesn't like mango leaves in their paper? Of course. This is some handmade paper from where I also bought that um, Harakiki paper from. They were doing handmade with recycles, um, recycle pieces. So I bought some from there. That's pretty cool. It's got seeds in it. Just, you know, don't eat it. Um, I've got some glorious tissue that I'd painted with leftover inks. They look beautiful. And, of course, I have an absolute mountain of jelly prints in different red tones with mark making and texture plates and oh my gosh it's endless i know i know just for a change <laughs> i also this week i'm so excited because my new stencils from kari gibson arrived and i'm so excited because i really wanted some beautiful flowers we have to have some flowers to go with the red theme because when I think of beautiful red, I think of glorious flowers. So this stencil from Kari, you can have a look on her Etsy store. She also has a website and a YouTube channel. Check her out. She's pretty cool. I've got a few of her stencils um, this week. They came just in time for my flowers. Yay. So, of course, I have the flowers in white. They look fabulous. And then I've used the stencil butter on them. Oh, in the metallic red and you know why do one when you can do so many and because the backgrounds are all different i might you know put them in this or that that looks glorious love it also i've got some of course in gold champagne gold in the stencil butter so i'm definitely going to use one or some of the flowers from this stencil love it it works so well. It was a stencil butter straight on the gel print with a palette knife straight out of the little pot. These ones here, straight out of it, crimson onto, I mean, so easy. Scoop it out with a palette knife. It's like you're buttering your bread. It's amazing stuff. I love it because it's easy. It's simple. It's straight out of the pot. Same with the champagne gold. Got to get yourself some of that. So we've got those beautiful prints to use. Glorious jelly prints to use in different shades of reds. There's so many shades of reds to use. So that's exciting. Bit of mark making. Where to begin? Where to begin is always the question. Of course, we've got some circles. There's always circles. So I'm going to start with one of the handmade beautiful papers. 
And I think, I think if I get to the bottom of this pile, I think I'd like to start with that, this one, this one. That's beautiful. It's so soft. No, it's so textural. I think I'll start with this. I'm going to put it on here somehow. Maybe not like that. Um, and maybe some with this. That's a good start. I'm loving this idea. I also have some, also some craft papers, some other handmade papers. Oh my gosh, some papers that I printed. There's also the fabulous papers from last week, which goes with red. Look at the gray and white with the red. That's glorious. I also personally love black and white with red. They sit really well together. So you need to have a little play and an experiment and juxtapose these colors around with some warm tones or some grays and neutrals or some black and white and see what it is that you love the best because, oh my gosh, it's so much fun. Yay, we're creating eight collages and I just love it. This is pretty thick, this paper. So um, I'm gonna have to, you know, push it out. <laughs> my, my book is never gonna close. <laughs> Oh, what the heck? I want to put that on there and I'm going to put that on there. I'm thinking maybe. Well, I took some scissors to it because I needed to break it down into a smaller, more manageable size. And I've decided I'm going to put this here like that. I love the line of the beautiful marble colors. Oh, just gorgeous. And I'm going to put my beautiful red piece right there like that and then i can trim off the sides later and then i might add something else to it i'm just not sure i'm gonna start with this because these beautiful colors are just glorious i love the warm tones with the red i may or may not add something of course i also pulled out this this is a print of mine that i printed onto some paper and then i've thrown some gold ink on it of course I did. So I might put this on this side. And I'm thinking that perhaps some of this glorious, beautiful handmade tie, I'm pretty sure. Uh, red with mango leaves, it's called. <laughs> That's why it's gold. So I'm going to put that on there. And I might put something else here or something else under it. So I am, of course, loving these beautiful warm tones. There's just something about it. But, you know, I love colour because when we get to the blues and the turquoise, I'll be just as in love with those colours as well. So, you know, I just love it. I love experimenting with the colours. I love trying different colour combinations of things. And that's what you've got to do. And you also, I don't know, I changed my mind, you know. One month I'm into a certain colour combination and the next month it might be something different. So allow yourself during this fabulous project to explore different colours, to try different textures and to see what combinations you're really enjoying. Because it does change depending on your mood and where you're at and what's going on in your life. And Oh man! I just forgot I wanted to put the other piece on top just as well it's still wet right see this stuff happens to all of us <laughs> Crikey. I've got to put this one down first this one goes first so this was a print it was quite a long time ago I was printing out some of my paintings I was trying them on different papers with different print companies and it was fun Yay! I wanted these rich tones and the beautiful gold. And look at that. That is just glorious. You can't tell me it's not because it is. Beautiful handmade paper from Thailand with mango leaves. There you go. Righto. So that's wet. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need something on there. And you know what I'm going to be reaching for, don't you? Yes. Pulled out my scrap bag. See, the circles always work. But do we always want to do the same thing? That's the question. What, oh, what about some black and white from last week? I loved last week's. It was fun. It was challenging, but it sure was fun. That's a nice little piece. That's from my beautiful pastry brush. 
You know, I don't mind that option because I think we need to, you know, branch out and not automatically do the same thing. That would be boring. And we don't want to be boring. Ooh, what about really dramatic? Like, really dramatic. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's dramatic. Well, why not? Why not, I say? Life's a little dramatic at the moment, so why not? Uh, that looks cool. That's an option. I don't mind that option. What about if we put it on the... Ooh. What about if we put it on there? That's cool. I like that. Oh, you know, that's a contender. Just saying, that's a contender. Or that way. I liked it that way. All right, that's a contender. I'm liking that. That looks pretty cool. Or we could go with the beautiful dramatic, really dramatic. That was from my beautiful pastry brush. Yay, feeling that. I was feeling it last week. So that's pretty cool too. What do you think? What do you think? Can you just answer me? <laughs> oh man, we could put that that side. Mm, that's kind of nice too. Righto. I don't know, man. I don't know. So many options. So I finally made some decisions, which was quite late last night. I mean, that's just how it goes sometimes. Um, you get busy and the day zooms by, but then real late at night, you get that ah, quiet moment. <laughs> so I went with this beautiful little piece here because I just loved it. That came out of my scrap box from last week's. And it's just that beautiful free-flowing form that I do with the pastry brush. Yes, my gossamer paper in black. I love it. And so I'm really happy with how this page looks. You probably can't see it, but I did do a little bit of a spritz of the Isink Shimmer Gold. And it's just glorious. I love the whole thing. This side here, I tried different shapes and different papers. And I didn't want to take away from the beautiful red and the glorious marble paper. So I ended up with just this little uh, lace kind of a spiral pattern paper. And it also had a beautiful spray of the shimmer gold. And I'm really happy with it. I think they look beautiful. These papers are just glorious. And these rich red tones with these um, earthy colors and the gold, it just makes me happy. What can I say? It makes me happy. So there you go. They dried up beautiful. I'm real happy with them. And that is a fabulous way to start week four. Yay! So let's move on to the next page. What are we going to do now? I would really like to use the beautiful flowers. I love this stencil. It's my new stencil. And I just think it's glorious. Do I want white? Or do I want red? These ones are in the beautiful stencil butter. Oh, man. Or gold. You know, they're just beautiful. I'm going to have to use some because they make me happy. Yay. So this is a stencil from um, Kari Mixed Media. You can find her. I'll put all of the descriptions for what I'm using Um Underneath the video, there'll be links to websites for where I get the inks, the papers, the stencils. That's what I usually put down, depending on what I use. I'm definitely going to use, do I want this one or the other red one? That, or first of all, is the question. You see how different it looks on the different backgrounds. That's more of a neutral colored background, and that's more of the warm tones. We'll go with the warm tones. Okay, first decision made. We're going with the warm tones. So what do I want to put with it? Well, you know, I might just go with some of these fabulous papers that are laying around in front of me. This is a handmade paper from um, Bangladesh, I think it is. Look at that. It's just beautiful. What a glorious color. Uh, maybe some of this fabulous wallpaper i absolutely love these patterns and textures and i think i'll just do something simple 
like a maybe a strata composition which is just like lines of patterns almost that's almost like a landscape and i'm going to put that on top of here in strips with all of these beautiful papers that's left over from the page before and i'm going to use maybe also some of this fabulous handmade paper i got this one from the place where i bought the harakiki paper so oh so soft the beautiful seeds in it and i think i'll just make a composition of these glorious colors yes i will look at all that redness <laughs> it's just absolutely fabulous i love it so much this side what am i gonna do on this side that's a good question what about maybe one of these fabulous gel prints because i do have quite a few here so i could start the page with one of these fabulous gel prints and go from there maybe even this one this has got the impression plate that i've done a few different times in different colors hmm, that could work that could work and then i'd really love to use some of this fabulous paper i absolutely love it this is the white tissue that i sopped up leftover inks with and then i put it on my table and sprayed it and it's glorious i think i'd love to use that as well and then i'm feeling like we need a beautiful rose handmade rose hello in the glorious red now this one i sprayed with the post box red of the dilution spray oh it's just fantastic you gotta love it look at that color that's just glorious have to use it looks amazing with all of these different shades and tints and tones of red i'm gonna do it so i'm gonna glue all this on and it's going to be amazing look how pretty these flowers look see i can do pretty <laughs> it's not always intense it might be a lot of the time intense but you know occasionally i can bust a move and do pretty yes right loving these absolutely beautiful handmade papers this one was made with recycled materials it's so soft it's just amazing i love it look at the color of it it's just beautiful now a strata composition is just basically going straight across there with different elements and stacking it on top of each other Ta-da! Look at that! It's flaming beautiful! Like, seriously? Okay, the eye zincs do tend to reconstitute when you put the matte medium over them, but don't let that worry you. You can only get it all over your hands. Pretty sure it's not poisonous. <laughs> Come on! Not like the pigments used to be. Like, hello? Yep, we're not ingesting lead white anymore, so, you know, we're on a roll. It's a beautiful thing. That is gorgeous. I'm loving it. Loving that beautiful paper that I sprayed that is bleeding a little bit, whatever. Um, my wallpaper, my handmade papers, I just love it. Those seeds are pretty cool. Bit a nice bit of texture there. And my glorious flowers. La! Now, that's a really beautiful start to this page. This print is from a impression plate of a tim holt stencil you should be able to just see the cross images on it it's only pale and rather faint but it's just glorious it was created with definitely probably <laughs> don't you love that definitely probably um alizarin crimson i would say some bronze and then i looks like there's some white or some silver in it i don't know actually i did a whole heap of prints with the impression plates all different colors in rather a creative frenzy and i just love it now how do we want this to go i'm thinking we want this on here like that 
I don't mind that, that shape. I'm loving this incredibly raw edge. That's pretty fun. Um, and then I want to put, of course, my beautiful, glorious red rose, probably there. Do I want this so high? Maybe I don't. Maybe I should pull it down a bit so it's not so high. Then we have that there. But I think I want something dramatic in the center of the rose. And I still am yet to cut that center out. So I'm thinking maybe there. Yeah, I'm liking that idea. What do you think about that idea? It's a glorious piece of paper. I just love it. All right, let's go with that. But I definitely want something more dramatic for the center. Just saying. I do. Now, red doesn't always have to come out with both guns blazing. It can be a little more subtle. Um, you know, you don't have to have it full saturation. You can do it a lot more um, toned down. Pretty much you can do it however you like, really. <laughs> Just because I like to scream and yell doesn't mean you have to. Now, this um, beautiful handmade roses paper takes the eye zinks so well. I mean, I did rather have fun spraying everything in sight. So I do have quite a few of these beautiful handmade roses in different colors. Let's have a look and see how glorious this red's going to be. Yes! <laughs> Of course it is. Now, which way do we want it? I like it like that or like that. Mm. I think, yeah, I'm thinking like that. We might get rid of, oops, don't tear it too much. Like that. Okay, I'm liking that. Sitting on my beautiful landscape there at the bottom. Does look like it, don't you think? I think it needs a little shimmering gold across there. I really do think it's going to have to happen. Now, I want to put something under the circles like this because I just think that it'd be fun. So if I can possibly tear some of this paper and put it under there like that, that'd be really cool. I like this idea. It seems to be I should tear it here. I just love these beautiful bronze crosses. They look fabulous. I mean, it's such a simple design, but it's really, really effective. I know I keep using them, but I've got all these beautiful prints. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> you're supposed to use all your beautiful prints. And if you print 20 of them, then that's what you have to use. So I'm thinking there, and I'm thinking like that. What do you think? Yes. I, yeah, I think so. Now, I'm really keen to go with this idea of spritzing down there and giving a little bit of a shimmer to it. That'd be pretty cool too. Okay, so this is the shimmer gold eye zinc. And it's, oh man, it's just really nearly empty. I don't know why that happens. I'm just thinking, this is what I did last night with the other page. You can, probably can't see it, but it has this beautiful gold shimmer that it leaves on the page. And it just looks amazing. Well, I think it looks amazing. So I'm thinking we're going with this with the bronze. Actually, like that looks good. With the four in there. Okay, let's do that then. I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. That looks nice. So what do you think? Are we done? Are we finished? Have we finished fiddling with it? I don't know. I'm loving these um, crosses. The color of that background with the bronze sitting on the red is just stunning. What about if I added some more? <laughs> I know, right? I know. What do you think? Yes or no? Yes? It's pretty nice. I like the way it brings the colour down because you don't really notice those background ones until you're really looking at it. Um, I'm liking that. Yes or no? 
Yes. Oh no. <laughs> what about, what about, what about? I'm really liking it. I'm leaning towards yes because I love the extra element on the page. I think the colors looks fabulous. I love the way it's bringing that color down. What about if we added some of this um, scrap of beautiful black Ogora lace? I know, you can be jealous now. <laughs> I have some black Ogora lace. What about if I put that under here? It, I think it dissolves fairly um, rapid into the background. So, you know, I don't mind that idea, but that's a little bit like a hairy caterpillar. So maybe not that piece. What about this piece? This piece is a bit fatter and not so caterpillar-like. Maybe, maybe, baby. What about this piece? If we put that down first, which will dissolve quite extensively, like the white natural one does, and then we put that on top of there. What do you think? I'm feeling it. Oh, yes, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm just doing it. Try and stop me. I'm just doing it. So my beautiful pages have now dried and I'm so happy with them. Look how glorious these fabulous tones of the red are. Oh my gosh, how can you not love this color? <laughs> So this strata composition looks quite landscapey. It's a great composition to use. Uh, you want to think about trying some. And the flowers stencil looks just beautiful. These handmade papers are so glorious. The way you put them out in strips like a landscape just gives you the opportunity to really showcase the glorious um, colors and patterns of the fabulous handmade paper. Yay, I'm loving it, it looks beautiful. And on this side, we have the beautiful impression pl plate print and some of the color on the inside, my glorious handmade rose and the fabulous background colors. Now, this is the beautiful black Ogora lace, which didn't dissolve as much as I thought it would, which is quite cool. I haven't used it yet. That was my first little bit because I only recently got it and it looks pretty nice. I did spray some fabulous shimmering gold on it because why not? We need some bling. And yeah, I don't know if you could see it. What about if I put the light on? Okay, can you see it now? Can you see it? Can you see it? It's got this beautiful gold shimmer on it. And I just love it. It looks so pretty. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. It looked amazing last night when I was in my studio here when it was um, much later and it's quiet, you see. It's good to work in the studio when it's quiet. Hello. Anyway, that really come up beautiful with the shimmering gold. I'm pretty happy with these pages um i'm just loving using the different tones of the red and finding different papers to put together it really is a lot of fun and it's quite simple like it's a simple theme it's the color the hue in any variety however you want to put it together so it's pretty fun you do have to really stop and appreciate this incredible color because you know the history of red it's pretty hilarious. And when you look back at how um, difficult it was to make these pigments color fast and light fast, you really do need to stop and appreciate as you squeeze it out of your tube or you put on these glorious papers that we're so fortunate now to be able to have such incredible art supplies. Anyway, I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to a history of colors. I absolutely love it. And I think the stories are fascinating where different pigments and colors come from and originate from and the cultures. Anyway, today we're going to be doing, yay, our next two pages. And I'm thinking, okay, so we've got fabulous saturation of red and we've got the light and dark in the tints and tones of reds. But what you can also do with red is put a little bit of red so depending on the quantity of red with some other neutral colors or some black and whites and the red then becomes this incredible highlight 
and when you're putting it with other neutral colors. So I might do that next because that'll be really fun. And I've got some leftover papers from last week's black and white theme. So I think I'll pull out some of those and let's look at using different quantities of red. Now, if you're not a big lover of red, then you're probably gonna like this idea more. I've pulled out some of the fabulous gray paper that I made last week with my mark making. And this one, oh, I love this paper. It's just a craft paper. Um, this is some handmade paper that I sprayed with the licorice. Yes, I did. And then my beautiful colored tissue that I like coloring myself. I'm going to put these together and then, then I'm going to do a highlight of red instead of saturating the page until your eyeballs fall out. We're just going to put a little bit of red. And then I think on this side of the page, I'm going to rummage through and find one of these fabulous neutral prints that I know that I have. Oh, hello, gray, that's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna start with the gray print on here, and then I'm going to add some of the fabulous black and white that I loved from last week. Oh my gosh, this is on the handmade paper with the seeds in it. They do drop everywhere, they're a little annoying. <laughs> but anyway, the marks, and the free flowing oh, um, paint splashes from the pastry brush. I just enjoy it so much. So I'm gonna put that on there and then I'm gonna find some highlights of red to add onto these pieces. I think one of my absolute favorite stories of the history of red is the cochineal. Of course, you may or may not know that cochineal is made of insects. Yes, it is. I was actually quite horrified when I first found this out. That cochineal that you will find in food colorant. Hello, I've played with it as a kid and threw it around in food to color all sorts of things. Is actually made by crushing these tiny little weeny insects, almost like the size of a bed bug, because their blood is so excitingly red that people just had to have it and use it to dye their fabrics and all sorts of things. The insects were used to make carmine, which is called cochineal, and are native to Latin America where they live on the cacti. They eat the cacti. So they grow the cacti to get the insects that eat the cacti to turn the insects into cochineal to make the carmine. Ha! Ah, isn't that fantastic? That's just fantastic. It's mainly now farmed in Peru where millions of tiny little insects are harvested every year to produce the coloring. Now, carbonic acid can be extracted from the body and the eggs of the insects and then mixed with aluminium or calcium salts to make the carmine dye, also known as cochineal. And today, yes, carmine is primarily still used as a colorant in food and in lipstick. So just think about that when you're puckering up next time in the mirror. <laughs> you're actually plastering on insect blood. I'm telling you, it's so true. Now, William Turner, the famous English artist of the 1800s, used carmine in his magnificent landscapes and seascapes. He apparently knew the colour was unstable and wouldn't last, but he didn't care. And now when you look at some of his famous sunsets across the glorious raging seas, instead of the stunning red glow of colour, they look more like a grey wash on a dull afternoon. But at the time, he didn't care. He wanted what he wanted and he wanted to use the pigment and he wanted it to look amazing, but it just didn't last. So I'm pretty grateful for the incredible paints and pigments that we get to use now that do last and are color fast because it's been through the history of time that these incredible advances have been made. Yay for us. Sad for William Turner and the people who bought his paintings. <laughs> his paintings are magnificent. Let me tell you, they are magnificent. And I would really hate that if the paint just faded to grey. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, so I've got these beautiful neutral backgrounds now. They are, yes, still sticky. And we're going to add a little bit of red to give them that beautiful pop. 
ha, and highlight that red does. Now look at that. This is mark making with a brush I'm from the gel plate. And I'm going to put that on the edge there, which covers up that gap. But look at putting that pop of beautiful color on those neutral backgrounds, how glorious that looks. Now, you know that I had to bring one in, didn't you? It was just bound to happen. We couldn't get through this series of the eight collages in red without me bringing a beautiful red circle into the mix. So today's the day and I'm going to put this beautiful red right here. Oh, I love it. Look at that. That is just fabulous. Now on this side of the page, yes, I'm pulling out some of my beehive, which is now beautiful, glorious red. Now, this was the red of the post box red, the dilution spray that I showed you in the beginning. I just sprayed my beautiful, fabulous white beehive paper with the glorious spray. I mean, so easy. I don't have to crush bugs. I don't have to, you know, do hideous things to try and achieve this incredible red color. And I just love that. Look how beautiful this is. It just tears so well. So we're putting this right there. Now, do I want it to go right to the top? Or do I want to just leave it there? Yeah, we're going to the top. We're going to the top. We just have to. So I'll just cut one, tear one more off there because we have to take it to the top. Look how incredibly bright this red is. I mean, that's got to be the blood of insects, surely. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Um, I should read the spray bottle and see what the pigments are. It's quite amazing. Righto. So I've got this one as well, which we could put there. Or this one. Doesn't really matter, does it? I'm going to have to trim it off the top anyway. All right, that one. Because it's going to get trimmed off the top. Um. Do I want to cut out some of the middle bit? Maybe, I'm not sure. But that's going to go there, and I'm pretty happy with that. And that's going to go there. And then I'm thinking about how much I want to add on to there. Not sure, not sure. Thinking about it, and we'll see. Right, so my beautiful pages are dried, and I'm loving it. They look glorious. Now they're dried, you can see the pattern underneath coming through. I thought about taking out the middle piece, but I didn't want to because I wanted to have the red. <laughs> I also put some of the um, black Ogura lace on it. You might be able to see the texture there. I'm just loving it right now. Yes, as a new piece and I'm playing with it continuously. Put some there. And on this side, I was fiddling with some other little pieces as it was drying because I'm looking at it as it was drying and then I started fiddling with it. You know, I don't know so much about this handmade paper with the seeds because the blooming seeds keep coming out and going everywhere. <laughs> I'm not that into it, just saying. Just saying. Um, I found a little piece here that actually, the paper is called Happiness. It's from Thailand. So I'm hoping that's what that is because we're needing some of that right now across the planet. And I've got some beautiful handmade paper with a splash of the red. Now, this ink that I've put on this piece here is a mix of the two inks I showed you at the beginning. Because one was too bright and one was too dark. So I mixed it together. And then I splashed it on the very last piece of handmade Harakiki paper that I have. <sighs> That's the end of that. So it looks beautiful. I have other pieces. I'll show you. I splashed it. And then I've torn it kind of into bits. Look how beautiful that is. I mean, I could have put that one on there. That one's just as nice. You know, that's going to come another day. But I also uh, ripped up these little pieces because I just like the shapes of the marks. They make great little elements. Look at that. I mean, they're just gorgeous. I love that. Beautiful. Yes. But what I'm not happy with is this. Circle, I love the shape, but the color's a bit flat. I'm loving my mark making of my brushes down there, but that's a bit flat. So I'm like, nah, we have to do something with that. I have Nathol Crimson. 
What's it made of? Is it made of bug's blood? I don't know. I don't know. It's made with artist quality pigments in France. Who would know what this stuff's made of? But comes out of a tube and I don't have to crush anything. So I'm pretty happy. Look at the colour of it. Oh, I wanted to put something like that colour because that's a little flat. I'm a little bored with that. So I've got some of this beautiful crimson, which we know where it originally comes from. But we're going to stop saying it because I might be creeping you out. I don't want to do that. I'm going to put a heap of the beautiful red paint on my glorious circle shape. And then I'm going to stamp it on because that's a bit flat and we can't have flat. One thing we can't have is flat, not when it comes to red. Hello. So put that on my glorious circle shape. Hope it's not too blobby. Try and get it somewhat where I need it to be. Yay, have I told you how much I love these things? <laughs> now, you only know where they come from if you know where they come from, right? And if you don't, just know they're awesome. You know, I could stick that on there. That looks fabulous, except my book's never gonna shut. If this wasn't in an art journal, I would stick that on there. Seriously, I would. I love that. But it is in an art journal and I do want it to somewhat close a little bit. So let's take it off. Ta-da! You see, that's much better. I had to have high impact. Yes, I would. Oh, you know, I'm still tempted to do that. But my book will never shut. So that now looks better than what it did. I like that colour. I'm going to leave it. I like the little ring around it. I like the smudginess of it. I like the texture of the paint. Yes, I do. I'm very tactile. I think I'm starting to realise a lot more about myself during this whole series. I am very tactile. Okay, well, that's glorious. Now that has to dry. I love this bit. I'm loving these pages. I think they're beautiful. And guess what? Now we're up to the last page spread. Oh, man, red's too easy. <laughs> I could do some more red, but I know we've got other colours to explore. So we're up to the last page spread. What are we going to do? So now these are beautiful and dry. I'm going to move on to the last pages for this week's fabulous 100 days of collage. And what am I going to put on these pages? Now, seeing as these are last, the last ones, I'm going to need to pull out what I really have to have and can't live without. I know, questions. Um, I think I really want to use this page of the Nat Geos. This isn't the original. This is the uh, printout from the fabulous copy. The digital download printables collage paper free copies that you can get from the link. Now, make sure you go to the right link. I will have it below the video and you can help yourself to the free downloads because I know it is really difficult to get the Citrus Solve in a lot of countries. And I have found that the printed images are fabulous. I love them. I use them all the time. I love the original one, of course, and I've already made a collage out of it. So now I get to keep using it. Yay, it was a good idea. So glad I took a photo of it. I'm going to use this one. Loving the red in it. How could I not use this with the fabulous red? What am I going to put with it? And how far up am I going to go? I love all this texture here, all these marks. I think I love the depth of the red in the bottom section. So I think I'll be hanging on to the bottom section. But if I trim it some like that, because I need to put something else next to it, I'm thinking. I'm loving this piece of paper. Look at the brightness and the, the saturation of this red. It's crazy. And it matches perfectly. Oh, same red. Um, I think I got this paper from um, Gina. Gina sent me a few papers and this is beautiful. You know, like the little note that I put in last week's. Yay, Gina, thank you so much. I think this was in the pack she sent me and it's so soft and so beautiful. It almost feels like fabric. Seriously, it's glorious. So I'm definitely going to have to use some of this for sure. And I'm probably wanting to put 
it like that and maybe something like that or something like that. Oh, I like that edge button. Okay, something like that. <laughs> that red is amazing. And then I think I'm going to put a little strip of something out of my scrap bag for down there because I have in here such beautiful pieces, um, the edges of things that I've used before. That's kind of not really working, but it's awesome. What else? Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm liking this color, but maybe not. Oh, what about this one? This one? Yeah, almost. Okay, what about this one? This one is a piece of paper that I only have one little slither left. It was a beautiful handmade paper, uh, marble, probably from the trade aid, I'm feeling, I'm thinking. Um, but I only had this one little piece left. That's the only piece left of that magnificent paper. So that could work. It's simple. We can do simple for once. Righto, let's do simple. So what are we going to put on this side? What else do, am I busting myself I have to use? Well, I rummage through my circle prints because you know I do have quite a few. And I'm rather enjoying this one. What about we put this really deep and intense one on here? That's got some beautiful red violet colors in there and some golds and some bronzes. So if I put that there, I'd probably put something here. Just not sure. Oh, maybe that piece. You know, that could work. Put something else along there. I don't mind that. The colors are right. See, it's got the red violet color or the maroon color and it's got the gold. You know, that's okay. I might go with that. It actually really works. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about that and we're definitely going to do that. So I'm going to stick those down and we'll see where we're at. So I might straighten up this piece, but I've got to be careful. I've only got one. I don't want to stuff it up because <laughs> I won't be able to redo it. All right. So I'm going to glue these down and then we'll have a look and see if there's anything else that I desperately have to have on these pages. Right. The pages are still a little damp, but they're dry enough to show you. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so happy with them. They're fantastic. So this is the beautiful Nat Geo paper. That is a laser print. Hello, it's not even the original. And look how amazing it is. Oh, it prints out fantastic. I love it. You really should try a collage with it. It's beautiful. And there's my glorious red paper. I think it's paper that Gina sent me and my one and only little piece of beautiful marble red handmade from hmm, maybe Bangladesh because I think I got it from the trade age shop um, and on this side now you know how I do these circles if you have watched the episode with the messy writing then you know how I do these circles how I print them on the gel plate if you want to know I'll put the episode down the bottom under the video in the description for you to watch because it's fun and it's fantastic and I love it. And I still have lots of prints from doing crazy printing sessions with that. I think that is just beautiful. And this is the Bangladesh paper that I had a little scrap of from using it before. And what I did was I cut the Nat Geo paper here on the edge because I wanted this particular section on there because I think that looks fabulous and that works really well with this paper. So that piece that I trimmed off the edge, I put along the bottom. Ta-da! I know, right? It looks flipping awesome. It matches beautifully, but also it has a great connection to this side of the page being the same colors. I know, it worked out fantastic. I actually think that these two pages were the easiest of the whole lot. <laughs> they were just so simple to stick on. And when I picked that up out of the scrap bag, that worked. And I'm like, oh my gosh, sometimes it works. And sometimes you just want to bang your head against the wall. Yes, I know I have those days. So now that is beautiful and finished. I'm so happy with these pages. Let's have a look at our glorious red theme 
Oh, absolutely beautiful. Here's the first day one, day two. These colors are glorious. I just love them so much. If you put a light on, you can actually see the beautiful sparkly shimmer gold. I know, you've got to get yourself some. Day three is beautiful. I love all these textures and colors and the richness of the red. Day four, this is working really well with the beautiful handmade papers. See, there's my little slither there. I know, I love it. Oh, and don't forget Kari Gibson stencil. These flowers are beautiful. They work perf perfect with my red theme. Oh my gosh, I was so happy they came in time. Oh, love it when it works. Day, what am I up to? One, two, three, four, day five. <laughs> I know. Day five, and we're looking at adding a pop of color, a red, with the neutrals and the black and white, and I'm pretty happy. Come on, you've got to admit, it's a little styly. Yes, it is. And these are just mark making with a brush and the gel plate. I know, I know. It's beautiful. Five, six seven and eight and there's our glorious red collection i absolutely loving these collages you know this is going to be a pretty significant collection by the time we've finished a hundred yeah i think i might be putting my own printables together i'm telling you these are absolutely beautiful so uh, make sure you have a look under the video in the description if you want to know where to get the papers or the inks or the stencils or the Nat Geo download. It'll all be there. And um, I hope you really enjoyed this week. I, you know I enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're still awake. <laughs> I can't believe someone went to sleep. No, I suppose in context, what she was saying was she was very relaxed. I'm like, whatever, Trevor. <laughs> anyway, I absolutely love it. I love that you're here. I love that you're participating in the Facebook group. I can't wait to see your red ones. Oh, I mean, you know, the black, white, gold from last week were pretty stunning, but the red, you know... It's going to be awesome. Can't wait. So join me again next week. Now, if you've been paying attention, then you're going to know where we're headed and what we're doing next week. I'm not going to tell you because you might not have been paying attention and you can wait and see. But if you know what we're doing, then gather your papers together and join me and create with me as you put the video on. That'd be so cool. And don't forget to post in the, vid in the um, Facebook group. If you're new, hit the um, subscribe button and send me some likes. You know, I haven't said that for a while. So maybe I just need to remind you to do that. Anyway, it's been awesome. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I really hope you had a great time. And I'll see you again next week. Yay! Join me in the studio. Welcome.